So kia ora, um, Nisan Bula Vinaka, Namaste, Asalaamu Alaikum, Malo Lele, Talofa, Noya, and Warm Pacific greetings. Um, again, welcome to our October webinar. Um, and before I, as always, before I introduce our speaker, I'm just going to present um, a few housekeeping rules. Um, so in true Pacific style, our webinars are very informal. Um, and we welcome a good talanoa at the end of the um, presentation. We have a Facebook group page, Twitter, YouTube account, and web page. I'll post details um, of these on our chat. Um, and if you haven't joined, please do join. The recording of this webinar will also be available on our YouTube, um, Facebook, um, Twitter accounts as well. Um, we have um, details will be forthcoming of our um, webinar in November, so I'll post them in those groups as well. Um, there are two ways in which you can engage with this webinar. Um, you can type any comments or questions in the chat and I'll ask them on your behalf at the end of the presentation. But what we prefer is that you unmute yourself and you ask questions um, or in, have any comments um, yourself. Um, finally, throughout the presentation, I'm going to request that you keep your mic on mute. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce our um, presenter for our October webinar. We have um, Vimle Shukla, who is originally from um, Fiji and now resides in Auckland. He is a lecturer at UniTech Institute of Technology, teaching in the Bachelor of Nursing program um, for the last five years. His current research is based on the experiences of Fijians in healthcare service usage in New Zealand. He desires to pave a way for migrant ethnic communities to achieve fair and equitable healthcare services. And for his online seminar, he'll be presenting on the sudden change to online teaching um, which did carve a pathway for future education. He will discuss the online teaching and assessment methods, um, part of um, part of which um, he has retained post lockdown. So into his current practice. Welcome, um, Vimlesh, and we're excited to hear about your experiences in teaching online during COVID and what you what you've carried um, forward, and you know maybe hearing as well of what you didn't carry forward and why. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jalal, and uh, thank you uh, everyone for joining. So, Bula, Namaste, Salam, Kia ora. Uh, yeah, so as Dr. Jalal has mentioned, I'm uh, originally from Fiji, born and bred in Lambasa, uh, the beautiful place outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, yeah, so... Um, my education background, so I did my diploma in nursing at Tamavua, the Fiji School of Nursing, uh, a while ago, and then came to New Zealand, um, did a few further studies, uh, worked at multiple areas over here uh, in healthcare, acute care, uh, and then joined Unitech about six years ago. Um, and as Dr. Jalal mentioned, so I'm currently doing a research on Fijian Indians. And our discussion prior to this was that it's there's barely any uh, published research on Fijian Indians. So that's why I thought I'll do some research on Fijian Indians here in Oakland uh, and see their experiences of uh, the utilizing of healthcare, the difficulties, the good parts they go through. So that's what I'm currently doing. Uh, but for today, um, I'll be talking about my experience on how I went through teaching when it was locked down. Um, so yeah, it was a sudden change because I think from memory when we um, lockdown was announced here in New Zealand in March. Uh, that was the time we usually start our semester and um, what had happened. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background of our program um, and uh, what had happened, we bought a whole program from another institute here in New Zealand. So what we couldn't just go suddenly and start teaching unless we phase out teaching for all the existing program we had those at that time so i teach into year three so year one and year two they had already transitioned into this new program 
it was my 10 in March when they went to lockdown. And just prior to lockdown, I have thoroughly prepared for this program to, to be taught. Um, and without, it was uh, kind of to be taught uh, in multiple different ways, because what we uh, practice here at Unitech Institute of Technology is that the method we most approved or preferred for our program is what we call blended learning. So my blended learning or the methods uh, of teaching was uh, com com a combination of things. Uh, first, firstly, simulation lab-based training. So if you're familiar with simulation lab, um, we have got our lab-based here. Uh, we are co-owners uh, with the Waitakere District Health Board, which is the Waitakere Hospital as well. Uh, no longer called the district health boards uh, now. So uh, we co-own that lab and quite a lot of teaching is done through simulation where our, we take our students, uh, they have got high fidelity mannequins where these mannequins even can talk to you. So what these mannequins will be doing, uh, we'll be training our students, give multiple scenarios and we'll be teaching. The other methods which we I was using was group work or Talanoa sessions. Um, when I joined Unitech, um, quite a lot of teaching was done just face to face uh, using PowerPoints and things. Um, but the program which I was teaching, uh, which is community nursing, um, and then when my students go out in the clinical area, when they go out uh, uh, for their practical sessions, Obviously, they have to do a lot of interaction with people. They have to talk. So what I did, I had worked with my Pacifica team over here at Unitech, and we designed another session, which I just called a Talanoa session, where I'll be giving them the topics, the learning outcomes, and I let the students talk about their views. And to be honest, this session was quite a hit because the quietest student in the class would be allowed or be given a chance to talk. And then when I say the quietest student for a couple of weeks, if they haven't shared anything, and when it comes to this Talanoa session, it just surprises me the why they come up with their ideas. They all are well-educated. I would say that the, this program is taught in year three, and they've obviously learned quite a lot in year one and in year two. So when I see them talking through this Talanoa session, it was amazing. Um, the other thing what I, also used was a debate or a discussion session. So um, my idea, uh, Dr. Jalal, was initially to talk to the IUT department, nursing department, and let's have an inter-tertiary debate. But just because of COVID, those plans were all put behind. So I had to divide my students into groups and have this debate session. So my debate session, mostly topics we were talking about health inequities or health inequalities, um, because we that's the one of the learning outcomes of my course. And again, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, our Pacifica group, Maori, who are highly representing the uh, stats in uh, sort of long-term conditions or diseases. Uh, so it was amazing to see it, hear their views as well. <laughs> Excuse me. The other part which I was used, we were using pre-COVID was the clinical or hospital-based training. So there's mandatory requirement by Nursing Council of New Zealand and NZQA that our students must have certain amount of or number of hours that they must go out in clinical and do have those practical uh, experiences. So that was part of it. And then guest guest speakers as well. Excuse me, <coughs> my throat is tickling. So I'll talk about guest speakers after this a uh, little bit later. But these were the chosen methods of teaching pre-COVID. But then suddenly what had happened? Um, it was uh, announced that we'll be doing all our teaching online. Um, the day I think I was told that we have to go home, I think it was Tuesday from memory, and my classes were supposed to start the following Monday. We never used Zoom here at Unitech for teaching, and to get a business license for Zoom, uh, account created, password. It was outset done very promptly by our IT team. Uh, getting used to this online teaching wasn't much of an issue, but the things which, so for example, I, as I've mentioned earlier that I had already developed um, the teaching methods which I was supposed to use and now suddenly had to go to online. Now I had to 
really rethink, recreate how I'm going to be teaching. So what had happened um, moving from all the methods which I mentioned earlier to Zoom teaching? Um, as you know, Zoom fatigue, you might have heard that word multiple times. So our team decided only to do teaching two hours uh, per session. So uh, two hours, one and a half to two hours in the morning and one and a half to two hours in the afternoon. So now thinking from all my interactive sessions, suddenly I have to go to do Zoom teaching. So my interactive session could be any time between five to six hours uh, around that. And then suddenly reducing it to Zoom teaching for two hours, I had, it, it was a big challenge for me. So um, yeah, it was difficult times, I must say, a little bit um, frustrating times as well. And so what I had to do when it's uh, night time, um, 8 to 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, I'll be thinking I'll be using Dr. Google to Google the ways I can make um, the sessions very interactive and exciting for the students. So that's what I'll be doing, searching. And uh, again, I had to redevelop the way I deliver the teaching. So that's what I did. And then in the morning, I'll be teaching. So that happened continuously for three weeks. My teaching was over three weeks period of time. And I didn't have any time to prepare for online teaching. S suddenly got Zoom uh, password uh, account created. And from Monday, it's like, a day before, I would be um, sort of thinking, OK, tomorrow I have to teach on this particular topic. What can I do about that? So I'll think a little bit do a bit of online search uh, and find out ways to uh, deliver that uh, teaching session. So some of the things which I used was um, the breakout rooms. I'm pretty sure uh, you might be familiar with breakout rooms. So what I did, like the Talanoa session I was talking about or the debate session, I'll put students into those smaller groups um, and uh, then I let them give them some time to work on particular topics or give them learning outcomes and they will be having discussion. Um, sometimes I'll even give them a couple of hours, go have your lunch, uh, come back, have a discussion in your own groups, uh, and then we'll have a discussion a little later in the evening. So that kind of worked. And when I, um, I'll talk about a little bit about challenges after this. Uh, even though used breakout rooms, but it has challenges uh, in itself as well. So group walks, discussions, and presentations um, was all done through this uh, Zoom uh, platform. Um, the other thing, apart from only using Zoom, because again, Zoom fatigue was kind of very talked about topic at that point, uh, and not only uh, Zoom fatigue, but also thinking of the students because the demographic of students I had and the location of uh, uh, Unitech, um, it's in West Oakland. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar of West Oakland and the demographic of students which I have, uh, quite, of, quite a lot of them, I would say 30, 40% of the students at that point, we had quite a lot of mature students with families, with children. So it, imagining all of them at home and then trying to uh, do this uh, learning session was a bit tough for them. So what I did uh, apart from that, I had to go and do some further uh, uh, studies, not further studies, but further search. And then what I did, I did uh, design some worksheets uh, and there was a little bit of talk about Moodle last, uh, I think last presenter we had. So what I did using Moodle, uh, design some worksheets where students can work on their own. So they were given some uh, questions, learning outcomes, where they would be a little bit creative in answering those uh, kind of short answer questions. So as far as we are able to cover the topics uh, and as far as I wasn't only talking and teaching through Zoom. So these worksheets were designed using those learning outcomes uh, and um, it kind of helped as well during that time. As I said, I want to talk about the challenges I had. First of all, device. As I said, the area which uh, this Unitech campus is based on, the demographic of students is quite different. Uh, quite a lot of our students were from the Pacifica background. Uh, and one of the 
problems which we had at that point initially was that some of them didn't even had a device. If they had to come to Unitech, they could borrow from a library and use it for the day. They couldn't take it home, but during lockdown, quite a few of them didn't have device. So luckily government did uh, at that point uh, uh, allow, uh, gave some devices, but that came after my teaching was kind of done because the uh, process the process took a little bit longer. Some of them or the rest of them, if they did have device, they could have one device in a family and it, it had to be shared between whoever, if it was the parents or the children, they had to share devices. So that was another challenge that they couldn't all attend Zoom session and things uh, the time uh, which we had to do teaching. Um, quite a lot of students did say that there was only one laptop at home. There was only, um, if uh, what had, Ministry of Education had done that point, they had also started doing some uh, online uh, teaching sessions for this uh, secondary school and primary school children. So they had to share the devices. So that was one uh, issue which we had to come across at that point. The other thing was no internet or connection or poor network. Quite a few times, my students, those who had devices or had internet connection, so if they had to present, if they had to talk uh, due to the lo locality or the area they were living, um, some of them had very poor network uh, and you could barely hear them. Uh, so chat was the only option, uh, but yeah, again, it was a challenge at that point. When I say interaction with the students or the learner engagement, um, Personally, when I teach in a classroom or simulation-based uh, environment, when I walk out of the classroom, I usually get some sense of self-satisfaction that, okay, today I have done, again, I've done a good job and I have done my job. I've done good teaching session. I feel satisfied. With Zoom teaching, I barely got that satisfaction. The reason was, a lot of students would be joining, majority of them would be joining Zoom sessions. I would be talking to screens, not people. There were a lot of uh, screens with names only. And I'm pretty sure you might, you might guys might have come across that as well. So it was very difficult to engage. Um, I kind of had asked, on every day, on a daily basis, I would be asking students, hey, can you turn your video on? Again, we could not enforce that uh, because of many reasons. But again, it was, I think I wasn't satisfied by just talking to the screen. So it was a challenge, a big challenge for me. The other thing, as I said, I think earlier was the time limit. I can't be teaching from 8.30 till three o'clock or something. So, I, and again, uh, only perhaps one and a half hours in the morning and one and a half hours to two hours in the afternoon. Um, so that was a time uh, limit for me because if it was a classroom based or simulation based, I would have been teaching much more than that. So it was challenging to cover all the content which was supposed to be teaching in those short period of time. But what I had done, as I said earlier, was that uh, I had to use other methods, for example, worksheets, uh, assignments and things uh, which I had to uh, sort of use. Um, so the assessment methods. So besides teaching, assessment methods also presented some challenges uh, on itself. So using online exams, so a couple of things which we did um, uh, that time was um, the uh, format which I use for my course was uh, using multiple choice exams, some scenario based, and of course, co uh, examination uh, and some worksheets which uh, and practical assessments. I couldn't do practical assessment over Zoom. So instead of practical assessment, had to do some e-learning uh, and worksheets and things so that we can do. Again, when um, these worksheets were given to the students, there were some students who do great job in those uh, answering those questions, but some of them just would put uh, anything or uh, they could and then upload it on Moodle. Uh, it wasn't working uh, as I expected. Um, and the other thing was the multiple choice exam. So what we did initially, because I was walking from home and again, 
uploading everything on Moodle, which we use quite often, was a little bit of challenge. So what we did uh, um, for multiple choice, um, so Moodle has got a, uh, a feature where you can upload uh, the questions um, and it would uh, shuffle uh, every time my student logs in uh, and the, the, the pattern, the behavior of questions would change. And the reason I'm saying this, when initially it was lockdown time, I uploaded all these assessments, especially the multiple choice. Um, of course, everyone passed, but I could see Though it was a lockdown time, you, the IP addresses of the students. So as an examiner, you can do that. Though it was lockdown, it was surprising to see five or six people using same IP, IP addresses uh, and uh, attempting those assessments. Wonder how. Nothing, I'm not going to say any further. <laughs> um, but what I had done, so learning from those experiences, what I had done, so um, the behavior, the pattern of questions, I would change it. So there's a setting in Moodle out. So the, not everyone will get the same question. There would be time limit on all those. So previously when um, we had uh, the initial lockdown, um, it was discussed within our team because of multiple issues like poor network. Some people didn't have devices. So we couldn't time uh, limit the exam. And we couldn't, like at the moment, what I do is like exam is open from, let's say for multiple choice, if I give them an hour to do. So I'll give them extra one, and, one hour, 10 minutes and should be done within those time frame. But during lockdown, I couldn't do that for multiple reasons. And we encountered all those difficulties which we had. Uh, so going forward, what I did uh, now using Moodle quizzes, multiple choice kind of exam is almost sorted. The other thing, what nursing council, the our governing body does uh, from this year, they have started uh, online state exam. Previously, it was all paper-based. So everyone doing Bachelor of Nursing program in New Zealand after their three-year program, they must sit a state exam. Uh, and before it was, as I said, it was paper-based from this year, they have decided to go online. So it was a good, uh, our students did say, after going through my course in year three and then attending that online course, it was a good experience for them because they had already done some uh, uh, multiple choice, it's all multiple choice exam by nursing council. So it was a good experience for them that they had gone through this. Um, the other learning experience around worksheet uh, was that what I had done, if you tell them, <laughs> the students that, okay, this is, these are the learning outcomes and you have to do this for, to understand these particular topics. Um, well, it was done by everyone, but the why, I think they answered questions I wasn't very satisfied. So what I had done, instead of um, just asking them to do the worksheet, I had allocated some marks towards that. So I would grade them. I would give 2% for this particular topic, 5% for another learning outcome. So they would be actually uh, graded for those. So as soon as it's graded, so the way the students answer the questions changed. So it was great that we ended up doing that. When it came to end of course exam, which uh, we, it's done at the end of course, uh, obviously, and during COVID time, what we had done, uh, we gave, allowed students a lot of time to do that. Even um, talking back to some of uh, uh, lecturers, academics at University of Auckland, they actually gave 24 hours time to do one exam, which could be done in two hours time. So they had done given 24 hour time frame and then again we tried giving them eight hours and all those but again uh plagiarism was an issue i must say so what we learned after those experiences that we we still going ahead with our online multiple choice exam uh, for our worksheets we are grading that and it goes through 10 18 so that they we know if there's any plagiarism, it's much easier to find out. So only thing which uh, we haven't changed much was the end of course paper-based exam. Instead of 24 hour or eight hour time frame, we get them in the classroom situation now and they'll be doing those paper-based exams. So um, yes, it did um, 
gave us a lot of insight in how the students were uh, answering the questions or the exams, how they felt during COVID and after COVID. Uh, so what I have maintained now is going ahead uh, with the online exam, uh, multiple choice and worksheets only, uh, the paper-based exam, instead of uh, eight hour, 24 hour time, we just give them, uh, uh, let's say two, two and a half hours. Um, why it is advantage uh, gives it is advantage uh, gives us an advantage uh, for those online exams. For example, if I'm doing multiple choice question itself marks, it doesn't takes me any extra time to mark those. So the way you set model, there's a right and wrong answer. You can uh, locate those ones, and as soon as the students click the submit button, I'll see that yes. They have passed or failed. This is the mark uh, allocated to them. The other thing was worksheet. Previously, what we did, those worksheets had to either be printed or the students would drop it, a uh, paper copy in our assignment box. And I'll have to distribute, uh, get help from other academics uh, in my team and give them to mark. Uh, so it, it took quite a bit of time. Now it's all online on Tenetin. Marking is much easier. I can do it at home. I, quite a few days, I'll be walking from home marking, and it's much easier. And if I have to tell other colleagues, I don't have to print those. I'll just email them, hey, this is the one. Would you be able to mark five or seven assignments? They'll be able to do it from anywhere. So it it's, uh, has uh, literally saved us a lot of time. Uh, and that's what we are trying to maintain. Um, the other thing, I also went and looked at some of the literatures um, and now you can see it's quite recent literatures and they do talk about uh, the online assessment methods, the teaching during COVID. Uh, they also talk about plagiarism. So I've stuck those references there if anyone is interested. So yeah, that's all from me and uh, for today. Uh, but I just wanted to say that yes, there was a difficult time, but obviously I think that difficult time has made us or our team learn quite a lot. Um, there were difficulties in terms of uh, providing online teaching and assessments, but of course, we have learned from those and we're moving forward. So thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Vimlesh. I just realized when you said you've got references, that there might have been a PowerPoint slide that we are not seeing. <laughs> so uh, okay, maybe, okay. Yeah, maybe if you send it I'll, to share it with those that attended today, I think we you might have forgotten to share the slides. Oh yeah. dear. So I went through without sharing my slide. Can you see the slides now? I can see the slides, but it was I great. Guess. We can see great it now, but, but can, I, can I just add, um, yeah. the presentation was just as good regardless, honestly. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I, 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 I don't think you needed the slides. But no, for the oh, yes, sorry. I, I'm really sorry. I didn't. Uh, so th this is my slide. I can just skip through those ones. Um, so overview and the online adaptation. So uh, <laughs> somebody should have reminded me. <laughs> uh, so this is what I went through. And um, uh, yeah, so these are the references which uh, I, so I'll email it to you, Dr. Chal.